Well, Google is so many things these days that it's impossible to talk about all of them in a short video. So let me just touch on the fundamentals and then you will be able to tell the rest yourself. All right, let's see what is a search engine conceptually. A search engine is an artificial librarian that helps you find any material on the global scale in a matter of milliseconds. Now this Mrs. Librarian can also rank the materials for you and sure, her presentation and experience will get better and better over the coming years. You see, Google search, as big as it may appear to some people, is just a fraction of a big iceberg that is starting to surface on the water. Many people think that this iceberg is artificial intelligence. That's somewhat inaccurate, actually. Unfortunately, artificial intelligence, as capable as one in the movie Transcendence, is centuries into the future, if ever possible at all. But before entering the age of artificial intelligence, with Google, we have already entered the age of augmented intelligence or amplified intelligence. The truth is, Google, with all its glory, is nothing but an access amplifier. And there are many other types of amplifiers that are coming. So I'm going to talk about three of my augmented intelligence concepts, namely memory amplifiers, focus amplifiers, and creativity boosters. One of the major drawbacks that we have today is that computer presentations is still based on the old idea of a dust database with uniform lists and uniform grids. This is good for computer programming. However, it's completely contradictory to how our memory works. Our brain actually hates uniform and repetitive presentations, and we tend to use differences as memory markers. For example, on your desktop today, the files are all in a uniform grid, and it doesn't matter how often you use a file or a program compared to the others, the icons stay the same no matter what. Same thing on the internet, a wiki page appears same to you if you're reading it for the first time or the hundredth time. You can bookmark a page with a checkbox and that's it. But that's not how we remember the location of a real book on a shelf or remember a page in a book. We highlight important pages, we remember the geometry of the books, we even use rounding and aging of the pages as memory markers. So I think in the future, the icons of the files and the pages of the internet will change based on how you have interacted with them. For example, you will be able to highlight and write notes on a wiki page, and those will be there as long as you want them to. Also, the pages and icons will visually age or graphically age the more you use them. Of course, you can reverse that if you want to, you will be able to reverse that, but that's just as a memory marker to help your memory remember those pages and icons. Now, these memory assistive technologies will be combined with the fact that all of your notes and sketches will be recorded digitally with tablets. So you would have access to your own handwritten course notes since elementary school through college graduation. Every web page that you have visited is like another page from your own notes with your own handwriting and marks in it. In your memory library that is stored on the cloud, you will have your familiar binder of wiki pages, your years old binder of blogs, and etc. etc. This is the beginning of a new age, an age of vivid memories. A big chunk of internet today is entertainment and advertisement. This can be good for some industries, but it kills our focus on daily basis. Because distraction and attraction is the very essence of entertainment and advertisement. Let me ask you a question. Would you ever consider a desk in the middle of a nightclub for studying for your math exams? Of course not. But that's what an internet browser is like today. Let's assume you have closed all the distracted tabs. Now let me ask you a different question. Would you go to study in a library that has a loud nightclub right next to it? Hmm, probably not. How about a library that has a nightclub on the next block? Not too bad, right? So you see there is an inverse relation between distance and chance of interaction or interference. This is in fact a very general law that I like to call the law of access. The old saying goes out of sight, out of mind. But I want to emphasize that this is an important element for amplifying focus. Other fundamental elements are attraction and rewards. Forget about that library with a nightclub on its next block. How about a fancy library where all your friends are studying in it right now? Well, that would be an awesome place to study, right? You see, now we are playing with the elements of attraction and there are many attraction elements that can be used such as staying with peers, visual attractions or graphic rewards. Future computers will interact with the users based on different modes. 
so a browser will be able to switch modes and align itself with who you are and what you're expected to do. For example, if you're a scientist at your office, your browser will enter a study mode where video capabilities are disabled, your Facebook is locked, and your feeds are related to your field of study. And this will create a focus bubble. And even more, you're visually rewarded for staying focused with short animations. However, the same browser can switch mode over the weekend to push away your work-related content and bring forward the fun stuff. If you want to learn Chinese, all the ads will be Chinese ads. If you're moving off topic on the internet, Google will be able to refocus you by showing a map of your thoughts. Now, there are some social obstacles for this and we might be more and more consumed by the internet rather than using it. But let me be optimistic here, okay? Creativity is one of the last things that augmented intelligence will touch upon before we see artificial intelligence. I think there are at least three fundamental elements for amplifying creativity. First, a random blurry space. Second, attenuation, interference, and echo in this space. And third, dynamic feedback of a trained eye or a neural network. By combining these three elements, I can imagine some software that can boost your creativity. For example, in the case of art, they can be a software that suggests a random pattern to a painter just like the clouds in the sky. The painter will see some shapes in these patterns and draw some line drawings around these randomly generated silhouettes. Then, based on those line drawings, the computer will change the parameters of the random pattern to align it with the state of mind of the artist. And this way, the painting or the idea is completed step by step collectively with human-computer interaction. This is when the computer finally gets the chance to learn human creativity. And machine learning, big data, and all of that will merge with what is by now a well-established augmented intelligence to finally spark artificial intelligence.